Hey, how's everybody out there doing? My name is Eddie from The Road Less Travel. And today I want to talk about this beautiful machine, the 2024 Can-Am Spider RT Limited. And this is the carbon black with the platinum wheels, as you can see. From the road less travel so let's take a ride man um hopefully i can convince you to buy one of these machines so um, just to give you some perspective i'm about 6'4 245 pounds and this fits great for me you know i have no problems the seat everything is comfortable backrest is a must-have uh, I got another video I'm going to put out just to show you the upgrades that I've done. But one thing, upgrade I've done before I brought it home, was I had the dealer put the Baja Ron sway bar and sway bar link. You know, I, I own enough power sports like ATVs and side-by-sides to know the value of a good sway bar link. Most people won't need it, but I plan on riding two up a lot. So let's just, just let's get a... Let's get to riding. Check it out. Take out this tender here. <coughs> now I already let it warm up before I come I came out here, so I'm all warmed up. So we could just jump on and ride. <coughs> Excuse me. My gloves. And I'm just going to take a little ride around the neighborhood. Um, I moved from uh, New Jersey, North Jersey to Delaware. I'm in Sussex County. <coughs> and one of the things I like about Sussex County, there's a lot of back road farmland where you can ride. So it's excellent for riding. Mm -hmm. So to start this, you see the message there, to understand Go to safety card, you got to take the throttle and roll it forward. Now it's ready to start. Push the start button. There you go. As you can see, I'm in neutral. All right, to put it in reverse, keep your foot on the brake, roll the throttle, roll the throttle forward, and hit the downshift button. And you hear that click, you know. Makes a lot of noise, but a lot of the Can-Ams make noise like that. Oh, forgot to take the emergency brake off. Press the emergency brake and I'm ready to go. Again, thanks for taking this ride with me. I um, just want to give you a little of my feedback about this machine. You know, I own it for like a month now. And uh, I was a little on the fence about getting it. You know, because I'm an off-road guy, you know, I ride ATVs and side-by-sides. And I didn't think it would be as much fun, but boy, was I wrong, you know. This thing is a whole lot of fun. Easy to drive, too, so. Again, I never drove a motorcycle in my life, except the time I, uh, I recently took the motorcycle endorsement. And the only reason why I took the motorcycle endorsement instead of the three-wheel endorsement is because in Delaware... Although they advertise, they advertise the three-wheel endorsement, but when you go to the class, they don't teach it no more. They said they didn't have a lot of interest. But uh, let's get started. Let's ride, man. Sting. Easy to shift. It's, it's, the learning curve on this machine is very low, man. You know, again, some people don't like the paddle shifter. But I, I kind of like it because it gives you a little control. You know, you feel like you have a little control over the, what the machine does and how fast it goes. Mm -hmm. And of course, it downshifts by itself. Mm -hmm. Now, me being 6'4", I did buy the handlebar riser kit, thinking that I would need it. But to be honest with you, I mean, it feels pretty good right now, you know. I still might put it on, but I really don't need it, you know. I feel very comfortable. 
in this position and I wouldn't want to block anything here but I might try it out just to see how it feels alright All right, let's get down these roads now the first thing you notice with this machine is how smooth it is very smooth it's like I mean I know I'm going to repeat myself during this video but first thing you notice you know and it's fast you know it got a you know it's not motorcycle fast but it has a nice pick up and take off you know and and you know you'll feel comfortable going out in traffic with this you know or riding with traffic or even getting away from traffic if you need to mm -hmm. again I had this machine for like a month you know, the funny thing I'll talk about in another video, I actually broke it on the way home. I broke the reverse actuator because uh, the dealer I bought it from was about three hours away. And I used a 7x16 Tandem Maxim trailer to pick this up. I had no problem getting it on the trailer, but when I came off the trailer, the underbody, the, uh, on the underbody, the reverse actuator is located and it got caught on the gate. It got caught on, between the gate and the end of the trailer, and it bent. So what happened is, <laughs> it wouldn't go in the first gear. So I literally had to jack the front end just to get it up off the trailer. All right. Then once I got it off the trailer, I had to push it in my driveway. Because it wouldn't go into uh, first, first gear. It would go into reverse, but it wouldn't go into first gear, which was kind of ironic. The next day, everything worked fine. It went in reverse, it went in the forward, I was able to shift the gears. Uh, so I went for a nice ride. <laughs> the third day, <coughs> excuse me, the third day, it wouldn't go in reverse. <laughs> so that's when I did some research. You know, the, the Can-Am Spider groups and the RT groups on Facebook are an excellent source of information. So I found out what it was. So I went to the dealer. I gave, you know, they, he kind of knew what it was right away once I told him the codes I was getting, right? But uh, it's important, you know, for, for those that are not mechanically inclined, it's still important to kind of research what issues you have in because if you just take it to the dealer blind they might not know fortunately in Dover uh, Dover Diamond Sports uh, Diamond Motorsports in Dover Delaware they're a great great service team there great sales too you know only reason why I didn't pick my machine up from there is because they didn't have one in stock and uh, I wanted to go with the 2024 because they didn't change enough in the 2025 2025 I believe you got a rear view camera and you got different tires but not much else changed but I just want you to notice how smooth this machine is see I'm riding with one hand and it's easy to steer right I don't get a lot of feedback in the handlebars from the road because it's very smooth very comfortable I mean even my sitting position again I'm 6'4 245 pounds and, and, it, and it feels great feels excellent yeah this machine uh, uh, if you want a fence about getting it I mean the first time I rolled one uh, I went to the dealer to let me ride it around and again the first thing you notice is how smooth it is but if you're on the fence, man, get it. Even my wife love it. You know, she loves this machine. And again, I'm not a motorcycle rider, never owned one. Only two wheel I ever rode was, uh, was a scooter. But this three wheel intrigued me because, you know, obviously I don't have to put my foot down. You know, it, it, it's a little more safe, but you still ride by the same principles as a motorcycle. You know, I was taught by a very wise man, ride like you're invisible. And that's how I ride. I don't gamble on this. 
I don't have no false sense of security riding this. I don't ride above my means. I just ride to enjoy. I'm gonna make this left turn here. And you can see, watch it start, the gears break down. Fifth, fourth, yep. Looks like I'm gonna need some gas pretty soon. I'll probably go to the gas station today. And I noticed with the gas, you can't stick the, you can't stick the pump all the way in to the, in, into your gas uh, container because it'll think it's full and keep clicking, keep stopping. So you kind of got to hold it on the outside and just watch the fill level on it. It's the easiest way I found to fill it up. Yeah, because if you stick the hose all the way into your gas tank, it's going to keep stopping and you're going to think it's full and it's not. So I just learned to hold the nozzle on the outside of my gas tank and just watch, you know, just keep an eye on it, make sure I don't overflow it. Huh? Yo, one thing I want to do is shout out some few uh, YouTube channels that really held me down until I picked up my own machine. Uh, Spider Chris, uh, Purple on Three, John and Miriam, excellent excellent youtube channels i'd like to thank you in advance because your videos got me through uh, until i picked up mine now i realize i made the, the right decision i love this machine only thing i i regret is that i didn't get it sooner but uh excellent channels out there there's a few other people that i miss that have excellent videos as well man but definitely sign up for the spider groups on Facebook. A lot of informative information you know, on, on those groups. I think I'm gonna hit the main strip for a little while <laughs> up here. When I get around here, I'm gonna test out the cruise, cruise control. See how it is. All right, clear and free. There you go. They put it on the cruise control. Look at that. I like the cruise control too because now I'm running cruise control and you can see I'm doing 43 miles per hour. I like it because you can kind of give your throttle hand a rest when needed. So it's excellent, you know. All you gotta do is step on the brake or change the gear and uh, that cruise can uh, uh, come right off. Well, look, man, this thing is so smooth. We'll turn the cruise off. The mirrors are not a bad position either. The mirrors, I thought because of my height, I have a little problem, but they're actually pretty good. Now, I might get the convection mirrors. I might get the convection mirrors that go over the top of these. Thinking about doing that, you know, just so I can see more, but the mirrors, no problem. I can see the car behind me. You probably can see the reflection. It's no problem. Sometimes when I go around these corners, sometimes I lean. But to be honest with you, you really don't have to. But I do it because it's a force of habit. Because, you know, I rode ATVs. I had a Can-Am two-up ATV. And, you know, whenever I ride or going around corners, I'm just used to leaning, you know, put my weight down into the curve. But it never, at any point, I found that it was tippy. Matter of fact, 
it has a safety mechanism if you're going too fast around the curb and one of the wheels lift up it automatically starts braking so you'll see in the video I done I was talking to the dealer my salesman a Schaefer's Motorsports he told me he actually tried to tip this thing over all right they give classes three-wheel classes up there he said he banged a corner at 40 miles per hour a real sharp corner and the thing as soon as the wheel came off the ground a little bit the thing braked <laughs> that's good to know that's good to have safety feature like that well, I'm coming up to the end of the ride man I just I, I hope you can make an informed decision based off some of the things that you're seeing today and again there's a lot of other videos out there that have a lot of information like spider chris purple on three uh if you want to see some great adventure riding check out john and miram their channel is great uh there's a few other channels out there i just don't remember the names and keep an eye on my channel um i'm gonna bring you my opinion as always i'm you know, I, I recently bought the Elka Stage 2 shocks, but I'm not going to put them on yet. But when I do, I'll do a video about that. Any upgrades I do, oil changes, I'll be sure to record it. You know, so you guys can see it, you know, see if you can do it or it's right for you. I don't like leaving everything to the dealer. Some people do that. You know, some of the, like electrical stuff, I won't touch. But like oil changes and putting on my front shocks. You know, there's enough YouTube videos out there to show you how to do it. Like even on my side-by-side -side and my, uh, my ATVs, I change the springs myself. I change the shocks or the springs myself. And the one thing about OEM springs... Right, you might feel that you don't need them. They will sag. I never had a machine, whether ATV or side by side, that the springs didn't start sagging after a while. So I suspect, looking at these springs and comparing them to the Elka, eventually this will give me some sag over time. Right. When you get aftermarket springs or shocks, you don't get that sag. Right, and you notice the ride quality the ride upgrade immediately so uh but to be honest i mean right now if i didn't upgrade you know you you, you can tighten these springs if it starts sagging you can adjust them preload on them but uh, i'm just going to switch mine out because based on my experience but right now this thing feels great you know i don't need anything mm -hmm. so thanks again coming to the end of my ride yeah, I'm heading back to home. Please get this machine or go to the dealer and check it out. Well, if you go to the dealer, check it out, and they let you drive it, test drive one, you will get this thing. <laughs> Trust me. All right, thanks a lot. My name is Eddie, a.k.a. DJ Deluxe from The Road Less Travel. Thanks for tuning in. And be on the lookout for some videos. And if you like what you see, Please subscribe so I can bring you more videos like this so you can make an informed decision about any type of purchase that you want to make considering these Can-Ams. Thank you. How you doing?